see if we can get the van over here. Hmm. I needed a change. I needed to get out somewhere. The summer heat had become so oppressive. <sighs> and you can't hear any people noise. And routine, overwhelming. I don't live in a van to conform, to follow the norm. I'm turning up the temperature because I am making mango chutney and apricot relish. Yum. There's something inside of me calling me out there. Wilder, freer, more secluded. Where my creativity can recharge, become magic and come alive again. It's summer here in the Northern Hemisphere. The sun is baking the fields, so we retreat with our vans, our tiny homes on wheels, into the treed areas, the forests to the edges of the lakes and oceans. I'm all hot and sweaty and ready for a dip. It's fun taking the van to places that I've never been before. Yes, I love Vancouver Island so much. We're at this beautiful little spot. It's just gorgeous. Where we had originally tried to park um, was actually closed because of fire danger in summer. And I get it, it's a bummer, but there's a lake in there and we were really hoping to kayak the lake tomorrow, which we still could do, but it's a long way in now. Whereas we like drove about 5Ks in the logging road, but now we're investigating a whole side trail. And I say we because my partner is with me, so I'm filming a little bit less, but it is still beautiful. I'm a bit nervous about the entrance to this little place and they have gone in to see if I can get the vehicle in, park and turn around. And we'll see, but looks cool. There is a possibility it's this situation that I'm not sure that the van could get over. To me, this feels something deeply romantic and nervous system easing to get off of the tarmac and into the brushy, overgrown ex-logging road, being tickled by brush the whole way as I drive along. I'm not wearing any pants, but it'll be interesting to see if we can get the van over here. Yeah, we'll see. She looks so pretty in the sunlight. <sighs> I made it over with lots of scrapey scrapey. It was very daunting, but it's so worth it for this pretty, pretty aloneness. For sure, there are fairies, imps, and small magical creatures who live here. In relationship with the water, the surrounding foliage, greeting at dawn and dusk the creatures who come to drink from this stream. I feel surprised that it is still running with the heat of summer so intense this year. Wow. Wow. Every time I walk through the paths like this, I imagine the fairy tale forests you read about in storybooks where young folk get led into the depths by a spark, a little illuminated floating being luring you on. Is this your princess ahead? Are you being lured in to join a secret clan of forest folk? What noble expedition lies ahead of you as you transport yourself here with me today? What will we find out here? 
and within ourselves today. Just keeps going and going and going and going and going. This is cougar country here and I'm wary about that as the sun is setting. And we're back just before dark and the sun is well set behind those mountains over there. And I feel a keen desire to be close to home, back to my step van and the joyous appreciation the glory of the setting sun. This is why I live in a van. Tonight, we don't share that with a thousand selfie takers in some popular spot. We're accompanied only by the cool and eerie sounds of a night hawk. One of my favorite pastimes, apart from forest foraging, is to try and figure out what happened and by whom when I see the remains of any creature in the forest. These orange feathers are simply beautiful, but it didn't feel right to take any. We're trail scouting. It's black, could be a bear, maybe a herbivore, it's not fresh, it's not a deer, and it's probably not a dog because it eats grass. Exploring trails like this is so fun. It's like, where does it go? Where does it go in this direction? Where does it go? that direction? What creatures have been here? What animals have been here? How can I tell? What plants are here? What flowers, forageable flowers are here? Oh, and you can't hear any people noise and you're in the middle of nowhere and these trails are not even marked. It's so fun. There is St. John's Wort everywhere. There's so much of it. Oh, amongst the broom. I think I want to pick some more, but all I have to carry stuff in is my mug. So I might fill this mug with St. John's wort flowers. Bye, Spot! You were great! Bye, Forest! After a couple of days, it was time to take leave of the forest trails and head to a different lake, bigger and more beautiful, and again breathe, taking in how its edges rise steeply from the waters up into the dusky colours in the distance. The sunlight fingers dancing between the hills in the distance as they fade, lighting up the last snowy peak. It's been a hot minute when I haven't been go, go, go. I'm working really hard. I feel like I've spent more hot, sweaty hours inside, looking at a computer screen, working, than I have with my feet in the water. More time worrying about things which in the long term are really inconsequential and are truly important for only their 15 minutes of fame. Why am I adding to my own stress when I have the option of actively choosing how I share my energy and the emotional investment I'm putting in? Why chase something that isn't mine to begin with? Why force my wild creative energy to mold to a data-centric reporting heavy, spreadsheet laden world. The new moon has come and gone and in that moment I took a step back, released myself from the stress that I was absorbing on behalf of everybody else. No thanks, I would think to myself, this doesn't belong to me and I won't be doing this forever. So why would I lose precious sleep when it really doesn't actually matter? I closed the computer and all the drama with it. 
and I feel such a huge relief to fill my ears only with the lullaby of the water. Beneath the keel of the boat that I am sitting in, I can feel my heart rate slowing to match the lap of her sides. As we approach a swampy shore, hundreds of tiny frogs leap across the shale, some swimming froggedly away. They're so tiny and cute! Beautiful. Ah, oh, I'm so in love with this. And the set of earrings, octopus earrings. Wah. And then it's blue inside. Oh, it turned out well, because this has got technically three different glazes on it. It's got the black wash, blue right. inside, and then the white and on the top. clear on top, yeah. Very cool. Wow. <laughs> wow. Did, did you do the glazing or did I they? I did the glazing. Yeah, you did the glazing too. Wicked. Yeah. Yeah, they, I, they said, if yours is complicated. You want to do it? And I was like, <laughs> yes. Awesome. Oh, my gosh. It came out so good. Oh, and I'm glad like it's like shiny and matte, like the rough and smooth. Oh, mm. I recently enjoyed doing a tarot reading for one of you who dug deep enough into my website to found that I offer tarot readings. I do a little video recording, pull some cards for you, and you get to choose which three card spread you want. And it was really lovely. It was really sweet and meaningful, and it made me so glad to be able to share some insight and wisdom of little cards like this that um, are not what I would call fortune telling but more a little like thought provoking guidance or uh, a different way of thinking about whatever situation you're feeling. So I'm really excited if you go check out my website below you can get yourself a tarot reading if you want. I thought I would also mention these pottery clips 
that I've now put in several videos. They will eventually be available on my website. I'm showing you now as kind of a teaser sneak peek, but you will be able to actually buy some of these pieces and I'll ship them to you. Um, it means a lot for you to support my creative endeavors and I really want to give something back to you in return. I know I make these videos and some of you find them helpful or inspiring or useful, thought provoking, etc. But to be able to actually give you a physical product that I've made or a reading that I've done for you means the world to me. And I really appreciate you being here along to support this journey and the art and the creation that I'm doing. So thank you so much. I really appreciate it. So cute. The forest doesn't need to be big or remote to be magical. For me, it doesn't need to be easy to get to or popular. Sometimes a little bushwalking and climbing over rocks through overgrown swampy meadows are truly the most spectacular. And of course, the little dose of adrenaline goes a long way. Getting excited about exploring is the magic of it all. Even if it's simply getting to know a different pathway, I hear it recently said, if there are trees in the forest, you're not alone. But are the trees friendly? Well, that's entirely up to the trees. And I love that because it indicates a need for supportive and respectful relationship. If one crashes through with destructive wild abandon, then no. But caring touch and gentle footsteps led with curiosity I think that is the secret sauce, even if it only leads to your culvert under the path. I heard about Bigfoot. Will we find him here? Is today when I'll feel the presence of the Sasquatch lurking in the distance? I'm on edge, looking around me, aware of any crackle and snap in the forest Hello, the trees it is another stinking hot day in paradise and today i'm turning up the temperature because i am making apricot relish and mango chutney and i'm excited about it mango chutney mango mango chutney there's something really special about summer harvest being able to prepare food and store it um i came from the southern hemisphere in the southern hemisphere we don't get apricots and peaches and mangoes mangoes don't grow in that part of the world so all of these fruits have to be imported the mangoes are indeed imported even here but the apricots are local they're from British Columbia and I think there's really something special to it. knowing where your food comes from um, knowing what kind of growing process it goes through what kind of farmers produce it and then turning it into food for the future uh, for my immediate future curries and sandwiches and salad dressings and taco fillings it's gonna be so good i'm really excited to experiment with flavors and learn about spices and how flavor combinations come together different recipes making up my own recipe which is what i do most of the time i'll look up a recipe for the thing that i want to make and often because i don't have the exact amount of fruit that the recipe recipe recommends often have way more um, or I may not have all of the spices that the recipe recommends I will amend it slightly and I love doing that it feels like a sense of alchemy a sense of another form of creating and this beautiful evolution of something fresh to something that can continue to be eaten well after the season has passed 
I think fermenting and preserving are two wonderful ways of providing yourself enrichment in the winter months. And I think our bodies are cyclical and rhythmic. So being able to eat fresh, but also then nourish our bodies in months when fresh food is not necessarily available is the magic of the invention of cooking, I guess. Um, and then knowing what's in one's preserves. Nowadays, you can just go to the supermarket and buy a jar of mango chutney. Um, my preserves have very little, if not no sugar in them. My mango chutney doesn't have any added sugar. The apricot one, I think I add a little tiny bit. <sighs> it is so hot in here. I am absolutely sweating up a storm. I have a whole bunch of jars. I'm gonna probably jar these and can them tonight when it is cooler, leave them just to sit. But I'm going to see a friend for their birthday and thought I would take a ready to go jar of each with me. And then this pot, I have mm, tangy, sweet, sour, <coughs> spicy. This one, the mango chutney. Mango, mango chutney. Mango chutney. Mango, mango what? Turned out amazing too, and it's so bright and colorful. And hopefully, over time, the smoked jalapenos that I put in here will spice it up. There we go. Mango chutney. Mango chutney and apricot relish. Yum. Beautiful summer foods to go with all of those winter potatoes. Yum. If, if you take away anything from any of my videos, it's build relationships with the world around you. Plant, animal, food, creature, nature. I am too hot. I need to go swim in a body of water or something, I think. See you later. I hope you've all enjoyed watching this video. It gives me great pleasure to make these for you. A big, huge thank you to my Patreons. You mean the world to me. I really, truly appreciate your support and enjoy interacting with the community. <laughs> I hope you all enjoyed this video and the extra videos that I post on Patreon here and there. And I will see you on the next one.